think you know uh, if you talk about the advanced precision farming practices or technologies it has always been for the last couple of years a b2b play uh, play you know uh, business to business play so that way i have i don't think pandemic has really affected it to a large extent in fact a lot of people are now getting sensitized towards use of technology so it's always been a b2b kind of a play so b2b play i think there's still some time to uh, for that to be a completely b2c kind of a you know uh, uh, tech stack or the product set so a lot of people are coming up now i think it's uh, because of this situation people have uh, you know what what would have been two to three years uh, uh, you know afterwards it has i think that that there has been a uh, you know uh, sense of more more on the lines of sensitization people have thought about it and a lot of organizations have come ahead and then said okay can can it be a solution so i think it's given a boost uh, but largely it's been a b2b play so i think a lot of organizations coming front is what i can say it's always been there as i said you know uh, what happens is that most of the tech part as i said iot devices these were not existing earlier so when you want to get hyper local data points you need to install these things that includes capex so farmers uh, uh, you know the very few early adopters are willing to pay that expenses you know there's a learning curve as well how to use this data points is it actually valuable and stuff so it's always in a b2b uh, as i said so it's been there for some time you know it continues to be a b2b largely share and more and more progressive farmers are coming up now especially in the export zone where we have seen a lot of people especially in maharashtra now there's a lot of traction maharashtra gujarat if i have to say tamil nadu for example you know surprisingly these guys their farmers are very really proactive uh, especially because they are dealing with export products uh, crops and they are sensitive about use of these uh, tools so i know and so far so i've seen a lot of people in the last couple of years many people have uh, you know uh, farmers have come forward to deploy these technologies on their own let me just take up how do we actually deploy a project you know especially a high tech farm project uh, what happens is that the first season the first cropping season happens to be it, it we look at it as a survey uh, uh, or a uh, or a uh, or a cropping season where we would like to capture a lot of data points so it becomes what we say is that okay we are deploying a tech uh, do as it is don't change any kind of practices do as it is we are going to install these devices on, on our own and then we'll study that pattern you know what what is happening how the soil is being because you know a lot of time you get a lot of surprises geography is different soil conditions is different weather is different and it's getting erratic by the day so for you to understand and suggest something to the farmer i think one season is good enough for you to capture you know for data points and then you uh, get back to the uh, system and then you understand okay these are some things that we can do so typically in the both uh, locations this this is really what you have done in the nabard one it's more high tech i would say where we have deployed uh, automation uh, not just the not just a system which will capture the data but based on the data capturing uh, a we are sending the advices to the farmer for some actionables but b we are actually automating all the figures on this project we are adding a layer of remote sensing as well so there is a study of how the crops are behaving uh, you know uh, the, from the crops the crops are actually growing and uh, we are trying to study the data points which are coming out from the from the farm where we have installed uh, sensors like soil moisture sensors like uh, you know uh, weather sensors and then we have leaf moisture sensors likewise so these data points we model a lot and we club the modeling with the remote sensing layer as well and try to understand okay what is the best possible situation that we can go forward and these are all dynamic because the data points are coming on very very real time basis so i might i might say the beginning of the uh, i might have a irrigation schedule at the beginning of the sowing I said okay every 30 days we have to we have to water or something but this is going to change because uh, as as and when the weather and data points other things are changing your suggestions are also changing and your uh, you know uh, activities are also changing so these moisture sensors the temperature sensors they actually help us to predict a disease or a pest at a very early stage so what happens suddenly farmer is in a better position to take care of that rather than waiting for that disease or pest to grow grow stronger and something something which grows stronger you have to use harsh chemicals so our idea is that if you if you're able to catch those situations at an early stage you're able to maintain that you're able to uh, mitigate those uh, problems uh, through some mechanical ways or use of very mild or less harsher chemicals the use of harsh chemicals in a long run so the data points the uh, benefits of these technology would be twin one is that because of a better plan and better management you will be you can expect 
the yields to go higher from, you know, let's say five to 35%, in some cases, 30, 40%. That's something that we do not claim, but we are seeing that, you know, in our previous results, it has gone higher. I can talk about the uh, the the project that we did with Kabome, where we have achieved uh, 25 to 35 tons of uh, tomato yield. So, so likewise, I think that that's going to happen. Uh, and uh, on the other side, the use of chemical also goes, goes down. So the cost of input also goes down. So that will uh, very well, uh, endure, you know, this double effect is going to benefit the farmer in the long run. A major, major milestone is uh, to reduce uh, the number of uh, the amount of harsh chemicals and also to increase the yield. Let's say we are targeting the next couple of years, it will be at least uh, 20 to 30 percent is what we're expecting. In total, 1,000 farmers. This is a special case. Again, I would like to say here that, you know, we have, we have included around 1,000 farmers in these three different districts. Uh, the technologies that we're deploying is not in all the farms. As I said, it has to be sustainable. It has to be a very uh, cost effective and sustainable ecosystem that we want to create. So we're not deploying each and take all the high techs in all the farms, in all the 1,000 farms. In fact, we have clustered these locations based on the survey. What we've done, okay, uh, uh, the best sample representative of, of 100 farms is this. So that is where we have uh, added a lot of intelligence in terms of the sensors and other things that I talked about. And once we are able to generate a lot of data points and understanding on that farm, we disseminate the same thing to the nearby farmers. That is how, you know, one farm is actually supporting around 50 to 100 farms in its surrounding. There are three to four different crops that we're covering. Uh, so uh, I would say potato, papaya, castor, tomato, sugarcane, tobacco. These are the crops which will which will revolve. It's not just that, you know, we are running it for four crops. There are four seasons that we're going to cover. So these crops will revolve. So potato right now is grown. So next summer, next winter again, potato will come. So likewise, these, these crops. We are saying that okay, these two couple of years was more on the lines of uh, you know understanding the geographies, doing those pilots, the small pilots that we want to do in respective locations, from our own funding or in some cases through the funders, uh, you know partners cases. Uh, we have managed and we have gained the confidence. We have seen that okay, we can we can really do it. I think in the next couple of years, it's a, it's a matter of scaling, and we do have plans to scale it up uh, uh, to most of the cases. At least uh, uh, six strategic crops is what we have as of now. You know uh, where we want to do uh, a lot of work. Uh, you know, a case would be that uh, you know we are we probably going to come with a kind of a jag reproduction as well. That's a pilot that is going on in uh, Bijnor area. It's more of the spices. You know, all the spices. Uh, you know. Uh, Cumin, coriander, then turmeric, then we have uh, sugarcane, as I said, jaggery, not just sugarcane, it's jaggery. So these these are the crops that we are looking at. Tomato, of course, we are doing it on a large scale, so we're going to expand it. Through.